Okay guys, we're gonna go over the standard configuration for a stack inverter and lithium battery setting. Uh, we got a lot of users that are starting to realize, you know, really to achieve whole house backup uh, and, you know, cut your power bill as much as possible. Uh, and also if you don't want to interconnect with the grid, sell back to the grid, maybe they've made that process hard for you. Um, just creating a whole house system that can interface with the grid. We want to walk through really what we think are the optimum ways to set that up and just give you a background on some of the logic behind these settings. There's a bunch of settings. We, you know, everyone has a reason for it. And we're going to try to explain that here and tell you what we're really recommending. You can deviate, but we really tend to support this being the structure for people trying to do what's called self-consumption. You want to basically run off grid and have the grid as a backup generator. So if if you, if you run out of power on your off-grid system, it'll just pass the grid through and let you run off the grid like you were before until the sun comes back up and recharges your battery bank. So this all comes down to the settings screen over here. And if we move in on the settings screen and we hold down on enter, we're going to have different settings here. Now I've already gone ahead and changed some of these settings, so I'm going to walk through what I've done. Setting 01, I've set to SBU. Okay, to change the setting, you hold down enter and then it starts flashing. So it's normally set to UTL. Now UTL is not what I think we want here because that basically always puts the utility first on AC input. We don't want to be going to the utility first. We want to basically run off of our solar, our batteries, and then our utility last. Uh, and that's really what you need to achieve your target here if you're trying to build a self-consumption system. So the next setting is your charge limit. This charge limit becomes irrelevant with the lithium uh, setting on the batteries. So it can be changed up and down if you have a uh, if you have a lead battery bank that we don't sell. But uh, if, if you're running off a of communication, which um, full disclosure, we're using this in the communication mode here with the EG4 batteries. So uh, we would just leave that alone. The setting 03 is your UPS. Uh, it, it's, it determines your quality of power that the inverter will accept. Now, if you're using the grid and you want to shift back to the grid, the grid's going to be a relatively high quality source of power. A generator would not quite be so high. So that's why there's an option for a generator input. I don't like giving a generator a wider berth voltage wise because you are passing through dirty power to your house and ruining your electronics. And it's just not, that's just not an acceptable strategy for most anybody I, I work with. So we're gonna leave that at UPS to keep our standards high. Now, um, 04, on the setting, we're going to determine a power saving mode. Now that is if you have, if you want the inverter to basically go to sleep if there's no loads. Now, if you're running a house or a cabin or anything that has a refrigerator, this is a garbage feature and I leave it disabled. Now, if you find that it just makes your world work great, then by all means, but it's irrelevant. Don't put it in that mode because if you ever stop using power and you're running a house, the inverters will essentially boot down and be like pulsing 37 volts to look for a load and that's not good for anything really. So I would leave that off. Uh, now your battery type being set, this is where we're, we're setting it for lithium. We did a video uh, previously, you can see in our links, uh, how to set lithium features. We have gone ahead and set this lithium communication up between our batteries. So that's been configured. Now, that's going to govern some of the other settings we're coming across. Uh, and we'll get to those later. The next settings are your two over current and over temperature overrides. So basically, with setting six, if you overload the inverter and you were to set this to enabled instead of disabled, it would restart immediately after the inverter's been overloaded. Now, I don't like that because of, I think typically things overload for a reason, and it's very likely what you're gonna end up with is a cycle where something's overloaded 50 times in an hour period and kept turning itself on and off, and it's just gonna damage your inverter. You're asking for it there. I always try to tell people to set this to disabled. It's just not worth it. Um, unless you have an absolute reason that you think it's important, 
please disable that. We got a temperature override here. It's the same story. Do you really think the temperature is going to change 10 degrees in the next 30 seconds? Probably not. So let's leave that one alone as well. If your situation is overheating, it needs attention. So I tend to say leave this both as disabled. Restarting automatically sounds cool, but in practice, it's a bad idea. All right, now, 08, your voltage. There's a lot of different voltages. Look at the manual right here. We have 230, 220, 240, 208. Obviously, most people are using this for 240. It's gonna, so setting that to 240 is a good idea. And then if we move on, we have our output frequency. We should obviously set that to 60 hertz. Let's just head back to that setting. 60 hertz, I mean, unless you've got 50 hertz appliances, which nobody has in the United States. So um, number 10 doesn't matter to lithium batteries. It's about lead and we don't have that problem. Uh, number 11 is actually irrelevant to lithium. Pro program can't be set up. Number 11 is your AC input current max. Uh, it does not set itself up with that. It's, it's designed for utility charging at that point and utility charging limits uh, with lithium batteries, uh, they're, they're not enabled. So this, now the goal here is to never charge from the utility. We don't want the utility to charge the batteries. We want the utility to pass through the inverters and power the house. Okay, so with setting 12, we're gonna set when the battery goes back to AC. Now the lowest number allowed here is 30%. So this will let you discharge the batteries by 70% and then shift back to the grid. So um, that's probably the hardest you could run them. Um, I tend to recommend doing it, actually, uh, because the battery life should still be towards 20 years of cycle life, you know, 7,000 cycles, even if you down, go down to 20%. So 30% is perfectly fine with me. And uh, the next thing is the 95%. Uh, that is set on your AC to battery. Uh, we can set that back any level we want. But basically this determines when you go back from the grid to your off-grid system again. Now, I wouldn't wait till it's 95%. I think that's counterproductive. I think that when you're starting to come back up from 30% and you go to, uh, let's just say, 45. I mean, obviously your battery's on the climb at that point. You may as well just get back off the grid. So I would do this 30 to 45% because it's already gone up 15%. So we're headed the right direction. Now, our next setting, which is 14, is your charger source priority. This is important. So I would go ahead and say only solar. We don't want it to charge from the grid. We want it to transfer to the grid and from the grid. That's your AC source for pass-through. This is your charging. Don't ever charge from the grid. It's a waste of money. It's, it's not a good idea. And so you can set it that way if you want, but at the end of the day, you're buying power from the grid. So that way, the next day when the solar comes up, you won't be able to buy, you won't, you won't be able to, to uh, charge the batteries at all because you already recharged them with the grid. So it's counterproductive. And we've got uh, setting 15, all these annoying buzzers you've been hearing. You can turn those off of setting 15. Setting 16 is your backlight control. You can determine when it turns on or off. That's you guys' call, it's aesthetics. Uh, 17 is about if you want it to beep when the primary source is interrupted. 18, again, is an overload bypass, meaning when you overload it, the system, if you were off grid, it would transfer to, to the, the AC input from the power grid. That may be a useful setting. If you wanted to be able to leave the house and have this, if the system overloaded for some reason, you hadn't thought about some heavy load that was gonna start, it could charge, it, it could transfer back to the grid when the inverse overload. So that's, I think, the right way to do a bypass, to do a reboot. Don't do a reboot just off the, just off the inverter because scientifically it's very likely that the inverter just has a problem. And so you're just repeating that. So I would go ahead and enable 18, honestly. Uh, 19, your bulk charging voltage is irrelevant. This inverter will not run on voltage anymore. So there's no point changing this. 
Uh, your float charging voltage is irrelevant. Your next point is your cut. This is your cut out voltage. Now, notice it's a percentage, not a voltage. Now, one of these things, technically we said we could go back to the grid at 30% as our minimum. If you drive this 20% down, you in theory could actually change your back to grid voltage, uh, back to grid percentage to be even lower. You just cannot, this is a dependent setting. You cannot set this shutoff voltage, shutoff percentage higher than the other, uh, you know, back to grid setup. So 21 and 12 are related and 21 always must be lower than 12. That's why we couldn't go below 30 on 12 because of 21 at the time is set at 20 by default. So if you wanted to do 12 at 10%, we could cut this down to 5%. And we'll demonstrate this. It took that. Let's go back to 12. We'll come back to 21 in a second. And what do you know? We dropped this to 10% and it took it. because it's dependent on 21. So if you if you want to if you want to push the limits down on 12, you have to set 21 lower first. That's important there. Now 28 is your address. Now we just skipped over 23. 23 didn't appear. And the reason why 23 didn't appear is we're not in standby mode. That sets up your paralleling, which is going to be a separate video, and you have to do that when the inverse is in standby mode. The address for setting the inverter is irrelevant. You can change your time if you want to set a clock. Okay, 7, 15, 20, 21 when we're doing this video. If you wanted to have modes change over time, which is something we don't provide technical support for, you in theory can. Uh, it's just not something that we have set up. You could change all your clock and base a lot of programs off of that. Now, battery equalization is a setting on 43 it's utterly irrelevant because of there's no equalization on lithium so even if you tried to enable it it wouldn't it wouldn't do anything battery equalization voltage is irrelevant because equalization is disabled and then if you head down to setting 49 this is where you can get all science fiction if you want and that is your utility charging time this is if you want to have like time amounts where the utility can charge and uh, again, that's this kind of going a little too complicated for the standard user. It's not typically relevant. People just want to be able to pass through to the grid. Uh, the, the whole time structure is not something we've really gotten into support at this point. And then um, your AC output time is also a limit that is set based on time-based logic. It's not something that we're going to walk you guys through. And that's really it. That's all the settings. So that should give you guys a good basis to go with for setting up one of these to do what most people are trying to do, which is just get the inverters to run off-grid and have the grid as a backup power source.